and you are ready to go. Okay, thank you. So uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, any members of the public who are watching. Um, this is a meeting of the Active Transportation Advisory Committee for uh, Halifax Regional Municipality. And um, we have uh, an agenda that's been circulated and we have uh, draft minutes from the previous meeting that was circulated. Um, I'm going to begin with a roll call. Uh, my name is Hugh Millward, by the way. I, I'm currently chairing the committee. I'll begin with a, a roll call uh, asking members to introduce themselves, uh, partly so that the um, municipal clerk can check that your camera and audio are working. So I'll, I'll just go through the list. Um, we understand that Councillor Becky Kent is not with us. Um, so we'll move forward to Annika Ropel. Hello. Annika. Hi, Annika. How are you? Um, we have regrets from Miles McCormick. Moving on, we have Holly Woodill. Hello. Hello, Holly. Holly, Holly uh, is the new representative for the Halifax Regional Trails Association, replacing Paul Berry. Uh, next, we have Andrew Taylor, who I believe your video is not working, Andrew. Is that correct? No, it's not, but I'm here regardless. Yeah, okay, thank you. And next, Milena Casanovicius. Uh, Milena not with us? No. Um, she's not on the call right now, so I'll let you know if she does join. Okay. Um, and next, Elizabeth Pugh. I'm here. Thank you. Hi, Elizabeth. We don't see you. We hear oh, you. it's not a great camera setup, but I'm in the moment, so okay. you'll just have right. to listen to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, Peter Zimmer. Hi. Peter's here. Thank you. Brittany McLean. Here. Thank you. Hi. Um, Douglas Wetmore is our vice chair. Douglas? Present. Thank you, Hugh. And we, and myself, as I mentioned, and then we have staff members David McIsaac. David? Present. <laughs> and uh, Katie Campbell. Hello, everyone. And just to let you know, Councillor Kent just joined the call as well. Ah, hello, Councillor Kent. And you're not calling. Time. Are you calling from Regina? No, I just got in late last night. No, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. Um, and uh, okay, and um, Emma Martin presumably will be um, with yes. us for her presentation. Correct. Okay. Yep. Right. Hello, everyone. Oh, hi. <laughs> okay. Um, so next, the land acknowledgement, I'll just read this. Uh, the Halifax Regional Municipality is located in Mi'kmaqi, the ancestral and traditional lands of the Mi'kmaq people. The municipality acknowledges the peace and friendship treaties signed in this territory and recognizes that we are all treaty people. Moving on, item two is approval of the minutes, the draft minutes that were circulated from June 16th. Uh, you should all have received those. I'll call for a motion to, well, firstly, are there any problems with those minutes? If not, I'll call for a motion to approve the minutes and I need a mover and seconder. So moved. Peter moved. And a seconder, please. I can second that, you. Andrew Taylor. Okay, Andrew, thank you. Um, then I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Okay. Aye. And any opposed, say nay or raise your hand. Okay, so those will be um, carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, as, as circulated. Item three is approval of the order of business and approval of any additions or deletions to that order. Um, firstly, Katie, are there any additions or deletions to the circulated there, agenda? There's no additions or deletions from the clerk's office. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I'll call for a motion to approve the order of business as circulated. And again, I need a, a mover and a seconder. 
I can move that to you. Thank you, Douglas. And a I'll second. second. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Becky. Um, and so uh, again, um, all those in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay or raise your hand. None opposed, so those are the order of business is approved as it has circulated. Um, business item four is business arising out of the minutes, and there is no business arising out of the minutes. Item five is a call for declaration of conflict of interest with regard to today's agenda. If you feel you have a conflict of interest, you should declare it now. None. I hear none, so no conflicts of interest, and we'll move on. Um, item six is consideration of deferred business, and again, there is none of that. Item seven, uh, firstly, we have correspondence. Um, Katie, has there been any, any, cor any correspondence through the clerk's office? There's been no correspondence. Okay. Um, I did receive correspondence as chair. Um, for with regard to a couple of things from Wendy McDonald, uh, and I think um, David McIsaac will be addressing some of those items. Um, item 7.2 is petitions. Um, again, have there been any petitions to the clerk's office? There have been no petitions. Okay, thank you. And item 7.3 is, I guess, is delegations actually, rather than presentations. Um, but there are no delegations, right? Okay. So item eight, information items brought forward. There are none of those. And then we move on to the meat of the business today, which is reports and discussion. Um, so we'll start with item 9.1.1, which is a staff presentation um, on the active transportation grants program. And Emma Martin, uh, who is coordinator of the active transportation community programs will be presenting that. Emma, the floor is yours. Oh, by the way, I see, I see uh, Milena Casnavicius is with us now. So hello, Milena. Hi, Hugh. Sorry I'm late for computer problems. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Thank so, you. So uh, Emma, are you uh, ready to present? Yep. Um, Katie, are you ready to make me a presenter? Yeah, Emma, you have co-host capabilities right now. So you I think I am. All right. Um, We're also having some difficulty hearing you, Emma. Okay, everybody see my screen? Okay. Uh, not yet, no. So as you can notice, my screen has uh, voice recognition, so you will see the titles. Um, Emma, we can't see your screen. Okay, yes. now we see your first slide, Emma. Yes. So if, if you do not Hi, Emma. Sorry to interrupt. We're just having a hard time hearing you. You're lagging a bit. So, is there any way you can make your connection stronger? You can. It might help if everybody turns their cameras off. That gives a better signal. And their mics. Um, and hopefully, I'm not seeing the uh, Wi Fi. In very and uh, the presentation be able to go through. If it's easier, we can try to share your presentation for you. That might give you a bit of a stronger connection as well. Hear me. We can't really hear you. Just one second. See. So, you know, uh, my turn to be very slow. 
transportation program overall. I will turn off my camera. Hopefully that will improve. Awesome. So we have your presentation up there for you now. So maybe you'll be able to have a bit of a stronger connection with your camera off. Oh, excellent. Okay, so um, that's excellent. Um, so will you advance the slides for me? Yep, we'll advance on your call. Okay, thank you. So um, you can advance the first one. Okay, so as part of the agenda, as I mentioned, we will I will present the AT grants program and uh, have an um, session for questions and answers. Next, please. Um, the AT grants program has been developed and has been approved by the Regional Council in 2019 as a continuation of a long-standing support to community trails associations and um, other not-for-profits who are supporting the vision of HRM to build a targeted multi-use pathway and bikeway network that was identified as a priority to connect destinations within HRM. Um, the map illustrated shows the target network and can be accessed online. Uh, thank you, next. Okay, the administrative order um, that was um, adopted by the Regional Council on September 30th, the Administrative Order 2020-011, um, is uh, the framework that is provided uh, for the Active Transportation Grants Program um, to community associations supporting the Active Transportation and HRM. Um, there are five streams within the grants program capital recapitalization emergency reinstatement education and promotion that are approved through the capital budget process and maintenance and operations that is approved through the operational budget process um, many details and all the program application information can be found online on our transportation cycling and walking website Next, please. So the five categories of, um, of grants are AT capital grants. Those grants are used for uh, um, planning and development of new trails, um, new infrastructure on trails or new amenities um, and um, on the trails, the AT recapitalization grants are grants um, meant to support community trails association who have projects related to reinstatement of um, multi-use pathways to um, to safe uh, conditions to um, or to upgrade them to um, better accessibility standards and better safety standards for uh, walking and cycling. The AT Maintenance Operations Grant um, is, um, is awarded for uh, costs associating with maintaining the existing multi-use pathways and their associated infrastructure and amenities to accessible and safe standards for public use and are meant for more routine um, more routine uh, projects that are year, year round. The AT Education and Promotion Grants is awarded to assist um, not-for-profits um, in HRM who are interested to support the municipality's active transportation objectives um, to educate and promote active transportation for, uh, through programs such as safety, education, skills, 
training programs, um, developing active transportation plans, etiquette programs, and other, other promotional and engagement uh, programs, and encouraging and promoting a culture of uh, walking and cycling in, um, in HRM and choosing to walk and cycling uh, as a mode of transportation. The AT emergency repairs grants are awarded to assist with costs associated with emergency maintenance required as a result of uh, natural disaster, vandalism, failure of structures, and it's meant to support the community trails, remediate those uh, issues um, before the end of the fiscal year so they don't have to wait for a full year to be able to apply through to recapitalize um, or to maintain. Next, please. In 2022-2023, um, the Regional Council approved uh, capital and recapitalization grants to, uh, for 15 projects um, for a total of 380,000. Um, there are various type of projects. Um, there are um, capital projects such as the Lake William 80 Trailhead and extension. Um, there are um, reinstatement and recapitalization plans for Marine Riders, Riders Trail Association on Blueberry Run. Um, there are engineering studies to inform bridge repairs and replacements. Um, there are major recapitalization of um, trail infrastructure, um, ditching, drainage, and vegetation. Um, there are new builds and also purchase of install and install automatic user counters. So as you can see, the type of capital and recapitalization projects are very diverse um, and um, the amounts that have been provided um, are very diverse as well. Next slide, please. If we are to plot the projects on the map that I presented initially, um, you can see the broad geographical scope of all the projects that have uh, been approved through the um, capital budget this year. Next slide, please. So one great example, uh, as I mentioned, is on the BLT Rails to Trails. Um, their project scope is um, very extensive um, and it includes the entire trail corridor. Um, and it is to um, to to reinstate the um, entire corridor to AT standards um, and to safety. Thank you. Next slide, please. Another great project that happens this year is the Great Beach Hill Trail construction. Um, it is uh, in total, it's a 2.9 kilometer corridor that connects the junction of Sackville Lake Spark Trailhead um, to the uh, Great Oak Trail to um, and Great Oak Trail to the junction of the Cobicut Road. Uh, it has been identified as a better connection because of the grade. The Cobicut Road is a very steep incline. Um, so um, the Great Beach Hill Trail is an old coach road. So it has better um, grading and it is um, a better infrastructure to be reinstated uh, through the park. Um, and it is in the first phase of its construction, so it will continue for the next two, three years. Next slide, please. The Blueberry Run Trail reinstatement, um, it has just started. Um, they, they are they are um, the Marine Riders uh, Trail Association 
is uh, looking at developing um, recapitalization plan and determining the current status of the corridor, um, determining uh, recommendations from engineers and from um, consultants, um, what needs to be done to be reinstated at an active transportation corridor standard and um, also looking at um, developing their organizational um, base to include members from the community at large and uh, provide sustainability to a corridor that um, has not seen any recapitalization within the 20 plus years since the Hurricane Juan. So we're very excited and we're hoping that uh, this project will be um, will, will be a successful one and the trail will be reinstated uh, within the next uh, two, three to four years. Thank you, next. So in terms of 2023, 2024, we have just launched the, um, the uh, new intake and um, four proposals. They are due in on September the 30th. Uh, we have organized uh, Q&A sessions for those who are interested to get more information. Um, and once we receive the applications, they will go through a internal staff review uh, with senior management and then we'll go through the process of the um, capital budget review and approval through the regional council. And after the regional council approves the budget, then uh, um, awarding will be confirmed with community uh, trail associations and awarding documents will be signed. Next, please. Um, in terms of the maintenance operations grants awarded, um, all community trails association who maintain um, trails through the um, through a letter of authority or through a license agreement um, are ex expected to um, do yearly maintenance and HRM is supporting with uh, uh, this grant to allow that. Um, all corridors who are on provincial land or through an easement that are not on HRM land um, can uh, be funded on a ma matching rate up to 50%. So um, it is a great opportunity for um, Trail Association to uh, receive matching grants from HRM to uh, uh, and from other um, level of government. Um, the provincial government is also uh, participating and in some instances um, um, Trans Canada Trail and uh, OHVIF funding is also participating with um, maintenance and operation grants. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of 2023-2024 timelines, um, this grant will be launched in February and the maintenance proposal submission deadline will be on March 3rd. And um, after the regional council is approving the um, maintenance operations budget for HRM, then we'll be able to confirm and award um, grants to those um, trail association who are applying for the maintenance and operations grant. Next, please. The HRM's AT education and promotion grants um, are divided in three categories. There are small community uh, project grants, uh, $1,000 or smaller or, or less. Um, those are small projects localized to a community um, or more, but they're very small. They tend to be a one-time event or uh, very um, they, uh, not that intensive in terms of logistics. Um, large community project 
grants between a thousand and five thousand, then with an up to fifty percent of the project costs. Um, those larger can be events or projects. They tend to have significant logistic efforts and they reach a broader audience and communities across HRM. The major project grants are over 5,000 and up to 50% of the project costs. Um, they are large projects with significant logistics, partnerships and duration efforts with an intended reach of across the municipality. So there, those are unlike the large community uh, project grants, those are not a one-time event. They tend to last then and um, over um, a longer period of time. Um, and they can even be an early event. Projects may include, as I mentioned before, safety and skills training, AT promotions and marketing programs, AT education and engagement, um, transportation demand management programs with an emphasis on AT um, to encourage um, walking and cycling as a way to as a way to um, to transport themselves uh, to destinations and any other AT related events. Thank you. Next one, please. Um, in terms of AT grants that we awarded um, so far um, in the spring summer intake, um, they're very diverse. Some are safety, uh, user safety education. Um, some are open, uh, open streets. Uh, we had the urban cycling 101 course um, that has been uh, canceled for this uh, uh, spring summer, unfortunately, but we're hoping they will be um, coming back with uh, this program. Um, we have on your left, uh, use your voice or a bell for safety on our trails. So those are um, type of um, projects that are intended to promote education and etiquette uh, to trail users. And also we had the fam family safe biking event with on the Sackville Greenway um, to promote um, walking and cycling on the Sackville Greenway and celebrate the facility in the community. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, the Dartmouth Open Streets was a major, uh, uh, it was a large event. Um, they have done it for many years. Uh, it brings community and businesses together um, and many community groups are coming uh, to activate the event and participate. Um, the Downtown Dartmouth Business Commission reported a participation of approximately 10,000 people. So it is a great uh, opportunity to celebrate um, walking and cycling and experience um, streets in an open and unobstructed by vehicle um, in a safe environment. Next one, please. All right. Um, the AT Education and Promotion grants uh, are the only grants who have two intakes. So one intake is in the spring, summer, and one intake is in the fall to make sure that uh, funds are available to, organization year, to organizations year round to uh, promote and educate public and encourage public to use walking and cycling year round. Um, so the same um, submission deadline for the uh, fall winter is on September the 30th uh, for projects that are expected to start around November, late October, November, um, and that are expected to end at the end of the fiscal year. Next, please. 
other type of support for community trails association that resulted from uh, the regional council uh, recommendations in 2019. Um, we can provide you some examples. Um, HRM reduced administrative burden for CTAs um, and we allowed source sourcing for um, for under 5,000 and also um, making grant disbursements immediately following the awarding to um, ensure that the uh, groups had funds immediately to hire contractors and pay for their projects. Um, HRM is creating a forum of discussion, training and mentor coaching opportunities um, in response to the Community Trails Association request for uh, more support um, in their projects for our planning, construction, maintenance and recapitalization, but also um, to support their organizational development uh, through volunteering and uh, fundraising and other topics of interest. The um, HRM, Nova Scotia Province, Nova Scotia Trails, and TCT are supporting Marine Riders Association to reinstate the Blueberry Run as an active transportation corridor. Um, the type of support we provided was a scope identification for the Blueberry Run, tender support, project management support, organizational development support to enhance capacity and membership for the uh, from the community at large. Um, another initiative is HRM is a municipal representative to the Nova Scotia Trail Strategy Coordinating Group, um, who is mandated to implement um, the shared trail strategy recommendations. Um, for instance, they're looking at creating technical resources for trail association, promote the benefits of trail and enhance user experience, uh, develop effective funding base for trails. Um, you can get more details about this initiative on the NS Trails website. Um, next slide, please. I believe that would be the... Um, that was the last slide on what the active transportation grants are. Um, some of you might be interested also in the Recreational Trails Grants Program. This program was also formalized through the same administrative order in uh, 2019 to support those uh, recreational trails that are destinations in themselves, but they don't connect uh, destinations. So it would be a uh, park, um, uh, loop around the lake, um, and uh, they also have three separate grants, capital recapitalization, maintenance and operations. These grants are uh, managed through the parks and recreations um, business unit, uh, the parks capital and parks operations. The RT grants program can also be found online. Next slide, please. Some of the examples um, that, I'm sorry, not some examples. These are the two projects that were funded uh, in 2022, 2023 by the Recreational Trails Capital Grants, a construction of a next phase in the First Lake Greenway, um, and also replacement of approximately 107 meters of wooden boardwalk in the Bluff Wilderness Trail. Next slide, please. And um, some of the recreational trails who have received funding um, for many, many years from HRM are continuing to receive funding for maintenance through the Recreational Trails Maintenance Operations Grants. Um, and um, they were awarded um, in excess of $50,000. Sorry. Um, 48,000. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, next slide, please. 
So um, this is an example of a capital project that uh, Schweppes, Shubin Akedi Watershed Environment Protection Society, uh, developed in Lake Williams, uh, Lake William Trail to connect over the CN Trail, um, CN Rail. Um, they uh, led the entire project, fundraised for the funds, and um, did the entire project management related to the installation of this um, massive bridge uh, on Lake, Lake William Trail. If you have any um, questions, if you'd like to get in touch with us regarding the um, AT grants, uh, please do so. Um, we have provided both my uh, contact information and David um, Kaizik's information. Um, if you know of any group interested to apply uh, for active transportation education and promotion grants, uh, please uh, forward them the presentation um, and um, we will be glad to support them. Thank you very much. I um, am now opening for discussions. Thank you, Emma. That's uh, very comprehensive. And um, I'm sure there will be some comments and questions. Uh, I'm going to go through the uh, speaking list and give everyone a chance, uh, starting with Councillor Becky Kent. Do you have questions or concerns or? No, thank you. I'm good. Okay, very good. Um, next, Annika Ropel. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you, Emma, for that. Definitely a lot uh, going on. I have a couple questions. Um, I'm wondering about the um, access along the Blueberry Run, uh, the the um, uh, the Riders Association is an ATV group, um, and I'm wondering parts of that trail currently have some access to ATVs and other parts don't. Um, was uh, yeah, kind of what was, what is the, that status on how ATVs are going to get on the trail and then get off of the trail um, in terms of that connectivity? And also, you know, is there any discussion about maybe that not having ATV access along that route? Um, so that's one question. And then I also had a question about that big picture of the uh, thing. Uh, one of the pieces is the bridge over Bears Road um, that is the CN, uh, the, uh, that goes over top of the train tracks that currently is a huge bottleneck. And I see it as it's on the map, but I haven't heard anyone actually talk about how that will be addressed because I realize that there are multiple um, folks who have to be at the table, including CN um, and the province and the municipality. So I'm just wondering if there are any updates on that as a overall master plan. Okay. Uh, thank you, Annika. Um, they're great questions. I will respond to the first one. Um, and maybe David McKaysey can respond to the second because it's not really related to the AT grants program. Uh, so I wouldn't be the one to respond to that question. Um, so in terms of the reinstatement of the Blueberry Run, um, the Marine Riders um, previously known as the Marine Riders ATV Club. Um, now they have changed their bylaws and changed their mandate to become a trail association. So their new name is Marine Riders Trails Association. They are in the process of changing all their messaging and um, engage with the community at large. Um, and uh, the other users in the organizations that have users from the uh, biking, uh, cycling community, from the equestrian community, because they uh, the um, their letter uh, permission letters include all type of um, users, including equestrian and um, ATVs. Um, so they're looking at expanding their membership base and in, um, looking at expanding their board of directors 
to include uh, the community at large. Um, the, um, the AT grants program does not restrict grants to those trails who are included in the AT priority plan map that also accept as a usage ATVs. Um, they are not the only, the Blueberry Run is not the only um, active transportation corridor that accepts uh, ATVs. Uh, Shearwater Flyer, uh, BLT Rails to Trails, and St. Margaret's Bay Area Rails to Trails are all permitting ATVs. Um, all these corridors are owned by the province of Nova Scotia and are under letter of authorities to the community trails. And HRM has no authority to change permissions um, for any users to use any of these facilities. Um, we support all active transportation corridors that are included on the map. Uh, we do want to make sure and we do have a system in place to ensure that um, active transportation is prioritized um, through the AT grants. Um, and we do encourage and follow up with trailers associations to make sure that Funding is access, uh, is um, secured from other sources, um, including the OHVI funding. If the um, corridors have ATVs as users, um, we are supporting the Blueberry Run. To, uh, sorry, the Marine Riders in their efforts to. Um, become more open to the public um, and we we are optimistic uh, that the new board of directors is going to um, to commit to to the um, transition and uh, and well in from what we're seeing right now um, they are committed to the transition and to focus on uh, reinstating and maintain sustainability of the Blueberry Run after. Um, so, yeah, as I mentioned, we cannot uh, inf we cannot um, we do not have the authority to determine um, usership on any of the provincial owned corridors. Can I ask a follow-up okay. question or was that my question? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, they're planning to expand, they've committed to, those are a lot of like, they're going to um, things. I'm wondering what kind of level of accountability um, will be um, looked for in terms of making sure that their board actually does have that level of representation. Looking at their website right now, all I'm seeing is pictures of ATVs. So it's really missing that active transportation aspect, even just in their imagery. Yeah, so they are, um, they have met with uh, HRM and Nova Scotia Trails and the TCT and the province, the Community Culture, Tourism and Heritage. Um, and they have committed to uh, change their website. That is one, one portion that hasn't been accomplished um, as their, um, they, they have taken a lot of time to reorganize their mandate and bylaws and they have a new Facebook account for the Marine Writers. They've changed their email address. So the website they do know and they have committed to organize, um, to organize events on the trail so they can take new pictures and change the messaging. Um, and they're actually looking at applying for an AT education and promotion grant 
to um, to develop such a program. So it takes time. They're not uh, currently. It's not a large organization. Um, they are looking for volunteers to support them in this transition. Um, they're looking at the organizations who are um, supporting users, use various users um, to 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 get engaged with the um, organization. So. Um, the transition is successful. Um, and they are working with the NS Trails to, to change their website. So um, it is in the process. It takes, it takes time because, as I mentioned, they don't have a lot of capacity at the moment. OK, mm -hmm. are you satisfied with that, um, Annika? Okay, Annika? I remain cautiously skeptical. <laughs> okay. Okay. We have had really positive uh, experience with them in the past two years um, than in the past 20. So uh, we want to build on this momentum and, um, and support the organization um, so they can be successful. Okay, let's well, let's move on since we need to get through the speaker list here. There was um, a question there, Hugh, about oh, there uh, yes, a, yeah. Okay, if you can speak to on that, the bridge. please do. What? Yes. Um, so we're trying to make a better connection between the peninsula and you know the western mainland, Clayton Park, Fairview, everything on that side of the municipality, uh, Chain of Lakes Trail. Um, and uh, one big obstacle is getting over the CN tracks at Bears Road. And um, that's our next big project there. Kind of the, the phase we're at right now is trying to fix Exit Zero, Joe Howe, Chain of Lakes Trail. So that's a construction project that's underway right now. And then coming up next, we'll, we'll look at that crossing. Um, we have looked at it in the past. Um, HRM's preferred option was to kind of widen the sidewalk and narrow the lanes. Um, it's not our bridge, so we don't get to make that decision. Um, so we're gonna have to go back and um, revisit that option or potentially look at another option and work with the owners of that bridge uh, who are in the province and, uh, and see what we can make happen there. Um, a new crossing, like a separate bridge is obviously expensive. It is a really tight location with a big uh, um, power transmission tower there. Um, so we've got, it's typical for Halifax, everything we do is constrained, but, um, but uh, that'll be a, sort of a planning and design exercise that will, will, will be a, a project for next year. And um, it's a priority. Okay, thank you, David. Um, let's move on to uh, Holly Woodle. Any questions or concerns, Holly? I will reserve comment on anything the Marine Riders do. How is that? <laughs> okay, but do you have any questions uh, about other aspects of Emma's presentation? No, I, I'm quite familiar with the presentation as a whole previously. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank okay. you, Emma. Uh, Andrew, welcome, Andrew Taylor, any questions or concerns? Not at this time, no. Okay, Andrew. Uh, Milena Casnavicius. You're getting better and better, Hugh. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> um, I, I don't, uh, Emma, thank you for the presentation. I don't have any questions for, uh, for Emma. Um, I, I will ask because I came in late. Only and only if this committee will permit me to, at the very end, uh, three minutes, just to make a little bit of an awareness uh, announcement. Um, and that's for way later after, if there's time. But other than that, nothing for Emma. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth Pugh. Question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's great, Emma. Thank you very much. Um, just one quick question. The photo you showed of the Blueberry Run, um, the one on the right-hand side, is that the causeway down at Three Fathom Harbor? 
Yes, it is. And yeah. uh, to our very optimistic and great surprise, it was all above the water. Yeah, I saw your email. That's, uh, that's great yes. news. The province would love to see that work on Blueberry Run go ahead. Uh, and we were actually doing some work up at the other at Porter's Lake End on that trail as well to, to sort of start to address the crossing of the 107. So it, that, that piece of the province is coming together. Very good. Uh, okay, uh, we'll move on to Peter Zimmer. Unmuted there. Um, yeah, thank you very much for this presentation. I understand a whole different slice of what done from the report and looking at that. Uh, just briefly on the cycling coalitions uh, deciding to not spend the grant. We ran into the problem of finding qualified um, teachers, instructors. We could not find people who had the adequate training who were available in that time frame. So we may, <laughs> I hope we will be able to come back and say, what we need to do is run some training courses for trainers and get some support under the grant proposals here. Uh, that's one big tech takeaway. Another takeaway I've got is the Cycling Coalition has been dealing with a whole number of things that are labeled active transportation. And with some context with some planners, and some city engineers, uh, transportation seems to be tabulated around going to work and home from work or going to do a specific errand. The trails aren't so much transportation as traveling. You know, I'm, I'm wondering, it just seems to me language should be a little more usefully discriminating. You say, transportation to some people and they're saying, oh, that's ferries and buses and lots and lots of commuter cars and we got to jam some damn space for the bicycles alongside. And, you know, this the, the trail system is recreational stuff, is traveling. You know, you're not going to go someplace because you got business at the other end. And, and, and I'd like the language to be a little more poetic about what, what the trails are doing. Second question I've got about this whole trail system, you've mentioned that it's multi-use and there's ATVs on it and bicycles on it. Um, I will raise the question as I've raised before about all the micro-mobility devices, the electrical powered um, Every, everything from the tri, cycling without age tri shaws to uh, use by people who want to ride on uh, various kinds of e-scooters. Are they allowed, not allowed, discouraged, encouraged, or, you know, that, that seems unclear to me. Okay, Emma, do you have responses? Um. Sure. Um, I can respond to the first one, and maybe David, who has been working on micromobility, uh, can respond to that. Um, because there is new legislation related to e-scooters, so he can um, he can bring it up. Um, so the regional trails have have been identified as active transportation corridors above and beyond their recreational tray uh, recreational functionality because they are connecting um, places as well so while they have been originally built as a recreational trail they have been identified through the active transportation priorities plan and through the IMP as great, um, safe alternatives for people, especially in the rural areas, to connect outside of the highways, outside of high-speed traffic. So especially in the rural areas, they 
they are great um, corridors for transportation as well. Uh, mm -hmm. There are um, some corridors who are some community trails associations who are um, counting and monitoring and surveying users to determine whether they're using it for pure recreation or for to 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 commute. Um, and there are majority could be recreation, but there are quite a good percentage, and that percentage varies that are also using it for daily commuting to to work, to school, um, to other locations, to see friends. Um, so they're not pure um, recreational for some. Okay, yeah. I mean, I, I think we need to be clear about what we're talking about and maybe help, help the city uh, clarify what these trails are about is yes they some of them do serve as a way for from people to get from one part of the sub development to the grocery store and back and some are walking and some are cycling and some are i don't know you know pushing a baby carriage and that seems to me an area of long-term concern of saying how do we get people being civilized to each other using all of our transportation commons. You know, as, what are the rules of the road or the trail or the sidewalk? And I think there's been a, a history of sort of, sort of functional divisions of saying, well, cars are, streets are for cars, full stop. And oh yeah, we might let bicycles and stuff on that. Um, I think we need to look at a wider, push for a wider consideration. I'll stop. Thanks. Um, Peter, um, I, I think uh, David may be um, addressing the, the micro-mobility issue, the e-scooters in particular, uh, later on. Is that correct, uh, David? Uh, I have a little point here on, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll talk about those a bit. Okay, you'll come back to, back to those later on, right? Sure. Will you? Or, or, do, or are you going to talk about those now? Well, I can answer Peter's question now. Okay, please um, do. Unfortunately, the first one will be, I'm not sure about the provincially owned corridors. Um, so those are either provincial crown land or park land. Um, the users that are allowed on those facilities are usually established in the agreement that exists between the, the community group and, um, and the province. The, I keep forgetting Let, the name of the new department. Oh, away. Letter of authority. It's a letter of authority. So I'm going to make a guess and say that e-scooters are not in those agreements yet. But uh, I'm going to follow up and, uh, and, and, and with, with some provincial colleagues and just see if, what they're thinking on that. I can say that for the multi-use pathways that are on uh, in HRM, that are on HRM parkland or in the HRM right-of-way, e-scooters are not permitted to be used there, at least yet. Um, there's going to be uh, some, uh, I think they'll show up in, in, the, um, in an update to the streets bylaw with some kind of further regulations about uh, where those devices are permitted and not permitted in the municipality. Um, in parks, it'll be a decision of, of, of uh, the executive director of the Parks and Recreation Department um, on whether we would allow them on places like the Chain of Lakes Trail or, or, or the Bissett Trail or Forest Hills Trail. Um, so that's kind of where that stands right now. Um, E-assist bikes, so electric assist bikes, as long as they're consistent with the definition of a bicycle in the Motor Vehicle Act, um, which is under a certain power threshold and not able to go, I think above around 30, 32 kilometers an hour, then they're considered bicycles. So they are, you know, able to continue using, go any place a bicycle is permitted to be used, which is on all of the multi-use pathways uh, mm -hmm. in the municipality. 
just one other quick little thing. Um, one little statistic that that uh, strikes me, I'm just as Peter was talking, is our, the community group that does the St. Margaret's Bay Area Rails to Trails Corridor, which is at the far south part of the municipality from Hubbard's to around Timberley, did some surveys a couple of years ago and asked people, you know, why are you there? And what was interesting is like 10% of the users we're using it for kind of a utilitarian kind of AT purpose to go shopping mm -hmm. or go to school or to go to work or something like that. So, and I would have expected the answer to be zero. So, uh, you know, I, I think people are using these facilities for lots of reasons. So I don't think we need, um, I think we should celebrate all that and work, you know, to, to accommodate, you know, all the different uses. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, let's move on. Uh, does Brittany McLean have any, questions or concerns? No, no questions at this time. Just wanted to say thank you for Emma, especially for breaking down and giving examples of, um, you know, what projects fit under what types of funds to apply for. That was really helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, Douglas Wetmore. Questions? Uh, no open? comments or questions for me. Thank you, Hugh. Okay, fine. Um, myself, uh, well, um, yes, I, I sort of have a question or, or a comment. I, I was uh, with uh, HRTA for some years and uh, the system has clearly changed a great deal and has basically been taken over fully by uh, HRM staff. Um, one, one thing that occurred to me though, it seems that um, the uh, St. Margaret's Bay wasn't uh, um, allowed to get municipal funding simply because they did have ATVs on their trail. So, and that's always an option for HRM. They, they can't change who's allowed on the trail, but they, they don't have to give money to all the trails, trail groups. And uh, it seems that um, that policy has changed now. Is that correct, Emma? Um, so, yes. Um, and, and the, the history behind the St. Margaret's Bay area rails to trails funding was more related to the commitment of the group at the time at, to have a long term sustainability project beyond the recapitalization plan. Um, so through their applications, there weren't um enough there wasn't enough evidence at the time um to indicate that there is a sustainable planning in place to maintain the corridor after the um saint margaret's bay area rail to trail would be reinstated um the administrative order that was adopted by the regional council in 2019 is um, providing the framework um, to uh, what projects and what organizations are eligible for this funding. And the main criteria is related to projects is that they need to be identified into an active priorities plan, active transportation priorities plan, or an integrated mobility plan. And currently, uh, all rails to trails, whether they accept or not um, ATVs as a user, um, are funded because they're included in the uh, vision for the active transportation regional network. Um, the funding level is only 50% for those who are in um, corridors not owned by HRM um, to ensure that all levels of government and other uh, organizations can support and want to support the um, active transportation corridors that are not owned by HRM. Um, so in short, the policy has changed. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, well, but, I mean, before, I mean, there was a bit of inconsistency before, like uh, some facilities that allowed ATVs, like the Beachville, like uh, BLT Beach Trail. Timberley. Thank you. They got <laughs> recapitalization money and maintenance money. Yeah. But they, so I think it, I think it, I don't know exactly. I wasn't, you know, responsible at that point, but it had also a little bit kind of what Emma was talking about, about the capacity of the group, the commitment of the group to, to an active transportation standard. And, uh, and it's a super tough, I mean, you know, Atrium has no say on whether ATVs are allowed or not. Um, so we, we kind of do our best with, with the hand that we're dealt. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I realize it, it, it is a difficult one because the, the trails groups and the actual trails themselves are so diverse. I, I, I quite understand that. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, any last questions or concerns before we move on? Right, we'll move on now to our next uh, main item today, which is a uh, staff report on projects and plans from David McIsaac. David. Hi. No presentation, just my notes. Um, so uh, just on, I just have a few categories. Um, so in terms of uh, functional planning processes that, that our group kind of does most of those for, for AT, a few projects that are kind of at the end or are close to the end are the um, Woodside Shearwater corridor functional plan. Um, we had some, some good in-person sessions uh, early in the summer, had a good response to the survey. Um, and so our consultant will be kind of finishing up their recommendations probably just, you know, in the next week or two. Um, the Peninsula South Complete Streets project, which is University Morris, Roby, South Street, um, part of the Integrated Mobility Plan, All Ages and Abilities Network. I uh, just finished public engagement in July. So we're looking to bring a report to council end of calendar year or early in 2023 with, with the recommended approach there. Um, and then we will be going to council, I hope in October with our recommended route and facility types for the Dartmouth North segment of the Regional Center AAA Network, kind of going from the end of Wise Road at Alro Lake, up to the connection uh, into Burnside. Um, so those are kind of almost done. Um, a couple of projects that are, we're just launching this fall are um, in Dartmouth East. So looking at streets like Woodlawn, Valley Field, Breeze, Caledonia, kind of in that area. And uh, and another one that we're struggling with the name, folks on the call might have help with us, but right now we're calling it Dartmouth AT Connections, Grahams Grove, Main Street, Westfall, and Penhorn. So it's kind of looking at that area, um, kind of between the big Dartmouth Mall and, uh, and uh, Portland Street, and how you get across the 111 there and how you connect into neighborhoods and, and other AT facilities there. So we've got our consultants on board for both of those and they're just kind of doing the da data collection baseline information now and we'll be going out to the public and inevitably coming to this committee um, this fall or, or early winter. Um, so that's sort of a flavor for what we have on, on the planning front. Um, just in terms of some, some on the ground construction work that's happening now, um, the, the bike lights and the detection at uh, Wise Road uh, and the bridgehead, Wise and Thistle, Wise and Boland is mostly operational now. Um, uh, I'll, I'll put the, there's a website where we're trying to kind of explain to people how it all works. So um, it's our first bike lights in the city. So we're kind of they're there, we're observing them, we're open to making some changes to some of the signal timings and to maybe even adding another light here and there, but uh, they're up and we're interested in feedback because we're, we're, we feel we're going to have to go back and tweak some stuff, but, but we'll see. 
brand new. Um, the Dahlia Local Street Bikeway, I was just on it today. It's almost there. So that, that's a nice connection that'll take folks from uh, Being recorded. I think we lost David. Can you hear okay. us, David? Do you hear me now? Yes, oh. we can hear you, David. Yeah. Okay. We can't. We can't. Yeah, there you go. We can see you as well. All right. Um, so Dahlia Local Street Bikeway is going to be a nice connection to get folks coming in from the Lake Banook Greenway. There's a new uh, multi-use pathway in Sullivan's Pond. And then that'll get you through Dartmouth Common to Wise Road to the to the bridgehead. So um, we have a nice connected corridor in Dartmouth now that uh, that I think is going to be um, uh, helpful and safer. Uh, we're under under construction right now at uh, exit zero. Uh, that's sort of the, where the 102 comes down and, and meets uh, Joseph Howe and it crosses the Chain of Lakes Trail. So few objectives there are to, first of all, it was a horrible AT crossing as it stood. So um, we'll make the chain of lakes crossing better. Um, we'll have a better connection into the peninsula with, a, with some more space to kind of get you down to Elliott Street. And then in the meantime, we're going to have some signage and, uh, um, and uh, some sort of traffic calm streets to, to kind of help make that connection until we can kind of get that that bridge connection made that I was talking about earlier. So that's under construction now. Um, and is is are you guys under construction in Portland Greenway yet? There, Hugh. Uh, no, I haven't heard anything further uh, from uh, the design engineer. Um, okay. But there's certainly no construction work yet. Okay, it's supposed to happen this year. I'll I'll get an update. I was hoping to get an update for this meeting. Okay. Um, anyway, there's and there's sidewalk projects and a few other bike projects going on, but but those are that's a flavor for what's happening right now. Um, on the education promotion side, uh, um, we are doing some work with uh, Annika and her colleagues at EAC, supporting some of their um, community-based uh, bicycle safety education promotion um, work. Um, <sighs> We're doing this promotion, this Get There by Bike with Bell Media this year. Uh, I'm So that's happening. I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not, but anyway, it's, it, it's happening. Um, we did the mayor's ride this weekend. We, we did a little tour down uh, around the peninsula. We had, I'm gonna say 70 or 80 people involved. Um, beautiful day um, and uh, nice ride, I thought. Um, but, but, oh, this came in today. This is the pocket bike map, which is kind of a, our new um, approach to, to maps. So this one's just focused on the regional center. And uh, it's got, uh, uh, there's kind of the downtown section. It's kind of the whole regional center section kind of a little bit on rules of the road, some of the new sorts of uh, treatments and stuff that are around. So those just got sent out um, today by courier to all the libraries, recreation centers, um, places like that. And uh, there's gonna be kind of a pop-up uh, route planning um, kind of event next Thursday evening in Victoria Park. Uh, someone named Amateur Alex from one of the radio stations is going to be there. So, and that's going to be kind of the launch of this. It's going to be done in collaboration with the Halifax Cycling Coalition. Um, so that's next Thursday night, the 22nd at Victoria Park, starting at 4 p.m. Um, and then I guess the last point uh, is uh, just about the sort of micromobility kind of situation in the city right now. Um, we're gonna be coming to council this fall with, with a recommended approach to e-scooter share and bike share in the municipality, looking for council's uh, direction on that. Um, you know, I, we're mostly interested in bike share, uh, but the e-scooters are here, uh, they're not going away and they need 
uh, a tighter kind of regulatory approach and uh, a tighter kind of municipal licensing approach. So that's kind of our intent there. Um, there will also likely be updates, as I mentioned before, to the streets bylaw or some other municipal bylaw, just to clarify some of the, you know, where they should be and not be. Um, municipal staff think they should not be on sidewalks. We think they should be in bike lanes. Um, we're not 100% sure about multi-use pathways. Um, and I'll stop there. There's lots of other stuff going on, so happy to answer questions about this and, or what I mentioned, but anything else that, that folks have, have any questions about. Okay, thank you very much, David. Um, we'll switch around the speaking list then, and I'll go through, starting with uh, Holly Woodle. Um, just on David's comment about those new bike maps you've got out, the bike maps never seem to make it to the ferry terminals. And that's where the ferry, the ferry terminals are always getting asked if they have bike maps in this city. So that would be a high traffic point. Um, other than that, I'd like to go back a little bit and comment that most of the trail associations in HRM, when they started out building trails, it was all about connecting the entire Halifax, Dartmouth, Bedford area. And it became Sackville as well, because Sackville was very big uh, on trails and very successful with their organizations. But we've always been about connectivity, but every trail is a great trail, so long as it is a safe trail. And connected trails make even better trails. They can be both active transportation and recreational in their purpose. And that's all I'd like to say about that or else I'll be talking all night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Holly. I know you're, you're a great uh, booster of the whole trail system and, uh, and you have been for many years. Thank you. Um, Andrew Taylor. Andrew? Nothing at this time. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Um, Elena. Uh, thank you, Hugh. David, thanks for your notes. That map did me no good. I'm smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that as I was putting it up. Uh, but it's okay, anyway, don't worry well, about it. Yeah. <laughs> and for Holly, because I, I realize I, I believe you're you're new on here, um, so I am completely blind, just to let you know. Um, I, I do have, if I can remember, my points are three of them. One, and and this is, I think, more to for the committee just to to bear in mind, uh, e-scooters and multi-use paths. So uh, from the blind and partially sighted community, and David and I and a couple of other stakeholders have you know have had conversations. Clearly, we don't want them on the sidewalk. They are here to stay. I really, really urge everyone to think um, about the multi-use paths and I'm just going to pertain to the one that's a big pain in my blind eyes uh, and that would be the Bears Road. Those e-scooters would be nothing but danger and a hazard. As a matter of fact, if we're listening to CBC, New Brunswick has been releasing how many injuries are coming in off of e-scooters. So uh, because David, you know, you said it's it's the verdict's not out and I understand I from from the blind and partially sighted, we we do not want them on those multi-use paths. They're they're a danger to us, particularly in the city. Not not like Sullivan's Pond, you know that perhaps that would be okay, but definitely not within that city um, within the city limits. Um, sorry to have missed the the mayor's bike ride. I just want to make everybody smile. My blind and partially sighted crew were dragon boat racing on Lake Bonuk that day and uh, we came in second, 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 and first. So I did, I, you know, I had to stay for a couple of something. So I didn't make it to the mic fair, to the, to the, to the mayor's bike ride, which was kind of disappointing. And uh, last, very, very, very happy to hear uh, David, that you say that, that chain of lakes connection and the, and um, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're pertaining to the street crossings 
because when I'm on my tandem coming from the forum to get onto that chain of lakes with my pilot, I hold my breath and fear for my life just to, you know, when you're coming down Bears Road and you're trying to cross Joseph Howe and never, just to get onto there. So I'm hoping that is what you were pertaining to. Please tell me yes. Yes. All right, then. Thank you. No other questions or comments. Yeah, I mean, it's always going to be, you know, there's a lot going on at that intersection, but um, yes. it's going to be better. Yes. Good. Thank you. End of thought. Okay, very good. Uh, Elizabeth Pugh? Nothing for me. Thanks, David. Okay, and Peter Zimmer. Peter? Is he not still with us? Looks like Peter may have left. Uh, Brittany McLean. Hi, thank you. I do have just one question. So you said that one of the projects upcoming that you're gonna start working on is this kind of Dartmouth connection, Main Street. Um, just out of curiosity, the overpass there, like from the Braemar Superstore, if you're traveling, say from Lake Finook to Lake Micmac, that overpass there is is will that be any kind of consideration to fix what's there? It's very dangerous as a cyclist. There's like, a, a, you know, a spot to merge from the circumferential highway. Then there's a merge lane to get onto the circumferential highway. And as a cyclist, going through there is very nerve wracking. And I know our family takes a completely different route and has to go through a bunch of neighborhoods off Main Street, and it adds like 20 minutes to a trip when we're trying to get our kids from school. So. Just wondering if that's part of uh, the, any reconsiderations when you do that plan. I, I think so. Are you talking about over the Cirque? Yes, yeah, over the Cirque. Everything over the Cirque is is, is being looked at, um, definitely. All okay. you know, owned, controlled, operated by the province of Nova Scotia, but uh, they've been uh, engaged from day one on this and uh, hoping for some good cooperation from them going forward. Well, we're going to need it just to, to kind of make some of the changes that we need to make. Okay, great. That's exciting news. Thank you. Very good. Um, Douglas Wetmore. Yes. So I've got a lot of comments on the e-scooter bit and I have no idea where to start. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like HRM needs to be really cautious about how they go forward with e-scooters because on one end, I feel like they're a great addition to the city, despite the many, many flaws that I'm not going to try and overlook. But realistically, I think it's been a huge boost to people trying to consider alternative methods of transit, maybe not necessarily for kind of the standard day-to-day -day use, but for recreational use, especially it's gotten people to really explore our streets and trails in a different way. And I don't want to necessarily lose that, especially now that we're building up our bike network and everything. Um, so with that in mind, the way that HRM approaches how they handle e-scooters, my main concern is that we're trying to restrict them, which is good and reasonable, but I'm worried that we don't actually have the infrastructure to support them because unlike bikes that have much larger tires and usually go at a higher speed, especially going downhill, um, scooters aren't as good when it comes to rough terrain such as gravel and bike lanes or potholes on the sides of roads. So when we think of where are these scooters going to be traveling, I, if I'm understanding correctly, was it they're going to be required to use the bike lanes or the road if there's no bike lane available. Yes, so the bike lanes, for the most part, they're pretty manageable coming from someone who doesn't use an e-scooter, but a regular scooter of roughly the same size. But a lot of the side streets, especially where we've got planned um, shared bikeways, they're not really fit for scooters and can be somewhat dangerous at higher speeds. Um, another thing I want HRM or would suggest to HRM consider is how they communicate this to drivers because drivers really don't know where scooters belong. And over the summer, I've been 
trying to use the road more because I don't want to use a scooter that goes at a somewhat fast speed, especially downhill on the sidewalk where it could impact pedestrians. So I've been trying to use the side of road more and on multiple occasions, even on side streets, I get run off the road and cursed at by drivers because they assume I belong in the sidewalk. So my concern there is what sort of communication are we going to have with drivers to say, hey, you need to look out for e-scooters now. You need to look out for scooters. Um, they have a shared space in the road and you need to accommodate that. Um, of course, we're still doing that with bikes in the first place because I feel like we're not quite there yet for that either. But I think that's something that HRM should really consider because I feel like a lot of the focus right now is on regulating e-scooters as opposed to integrating them into the network into a way that makes e-scooters still viable, which is what I'm kind of concerned about with how we're moving forward with this. Um, I have a few concerns about the multi-use pathways and e-scooters as well. I think it's just a horrible situation in general because multi-use pathways were kind of the I don't know. I, I feel like we took sidewalks. We wanted to get bikes and scooters off them because it was unsafe. And then we instead built a multi-use pathway, which is essentially the same thing, but we're allowing bikes on it. So I guess my question was, if we want to ban e-scooters and scooters off of multi-use pathways, especially in scenarios like Bears Road, where that's a key corridor, where else are this, these e-scooters going to go in that case? Um, that's not to say I think they belong on multi-use pathways because I think it's still dangerous, but I think there need to be, there needs to be some consideration that e-scooters are neat or a different route is going to need to exist for those e-scooters. Um, is there anything you wanted to speak to that or any comments on that? No, I agree. Uh, it's partially why it's, you know, the multi-use pathways are tough. We're going to have to do some jurisdictional scans. We're going to have to see what the safety, what the accessibility, what we're kind of, what the evidence base is, if there is one, um, definitely talking to folks and, and, and hearing, you know, what their preferences are. Um, we have kind of thought about maybe a more kind of context specific approach. So maybe there's some places where they do belong on the kind of parks multi-use pathways and some places where they don't quite fit um you know to be frank you know we're already up to here with all of our challenges and trying to get safe bike networks and trying to address accessibility properly and try to do all the other and now the e-scooters have come along and it's just like oh my god there's more um so uh so those are all really helpful comments as we kind of try to figure out and navigate what we do next with it. Um, uh, I think, you know, I, I, your comment about communications to drivers, I think is, is valuable. I think it, it's, you know, a lot of our communications have been about getting more people bicycling or telling users of the road what, you know, what this symbol means or what that sign means and that kind of thing. But you know, and kind of getting the sense that there might be another kind of communications promotion approach that, that we use potentially with drivers around uh, vulnerable road users. And I don't know what that is exactly, but, um, but uh, I hear you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank and you. Douglas did the mayor's ride all on his scooter <laughs> on Saturday. So I thought that yes, was pretty I was, impressive. I was going to say, I did the mayor's ride on my scooter and, uh, I feel like the one thing I learned was um, despite all our efforts that we've, we have been growing, we have been making a lot of great improvements. There's definitely still a very long road ahead of us to make, make the streets safe for everyone, essentially. But yep. anyways, thank you for letting me get off, the, get all that uh, off my chest on you. <laughs> okay. That's okay, what we're here this. for. Um, Councillor Kent. Thank you, Hugh. Thanks for all the comments and, and insight, folks. This is really in, uh, helpful to me. Certainly it validates quite a few things that um, I hear in, in a lot of different areas. Um, uh, Dave, I just want to add in 
the um, piece for around that Highway 111 crossing. I think it's a really important crossing area that most people, as we as we uh, you know encourage people to the walkability of our city and the and connectivity of our communities. This is a it's, it's a big gap and an area of concern. Um, people, I see people attempting to do some of those crossings uh, unsafely and illegally in a number of locations. Just that's just when I'm going out and about. Um, it's been brought to my attention as well over the last couple of years. Um, um, now that I'm back at council, the um, I'm glad you mentioned the Portland Greenway. Um, you know, if, do we have any? Uh, you, you're saying that some things should have happened. We we were surprised. You were kind of surprised that something hasn't been happening. What would you anticipate that you would have expected to see by now? And when you do update, Hugh, can you please copy me on that? Um, yeah, and, and uh, on a regular basis, people in the area have been struggling with the the um, corridor on Eisner Drive, the way it has been placed. Um, we know it's pilot. We know it's in anticipation of something bigger happening in the future, and, and staff are collecting data on it and in regards to feedback from the public and such. But knowing that something could be changing um, this season, it would be, I think, and, and we're lucky, I'm lucky that I have Hugh here as well, because he's on the Portland Estates and Hills Residents Association and that kind of connectivity and community um, communication to any organizations in our communities around these active transportation uh, corridors and changes, really important. So it's good to see you, Holly, on the call as well. Um, and any others that are are doing that, uh, that are, are paying attention to the work that we're doing here. Sometimes people wonder like what's on the agenda. When you look at the agenda today, it didn't show a lot, but a lot of information has been shared today. So thanks for that for everybody. But Dave, you just can keep me up to date as well. Thanks. Yep, for sure. Okay, very good. Um, Annika Ropel. Hi, I'm gonna try and keep this speedy uh, and mostly uh, agreeing with a lot of people, but yeah, it is really, as Holly was saying, connected trails is definitely, uh, a, a, a beautiful thing. And it really does feel like we're finally starting to <laughs> pick up some momentum on connecting things. Um, congrats Melina on the boat race. Um, I had, a uh, two questions about projects, uh, Africville, that connector piece where what's the status on that. And I hate to be the person who always brings it up, but how about that McDonald bridge? Um, what's the status on that? Um, uh, and then uh, love the conversation about e-scooters. I do think that it's really exciting to see kind of a new form of micro mobility happening. And I think the, that, um, Doug, uh, Douglas's comments were great. Uh, would love to talk more about, uh, vehicle education and vulnerable road users. Once things get nailed down, it'd be cool to see a campaign similar to the I share the road magnets. Maybe we need to add a little scooter on those uh, to that as well. I also wanted to highlight parked cars um, being a big factor with the safety of e-scooters as well, um, just because they are somehow even less visible than bikes. And so that idea of when you have parked cars um, and parked cars and bike lanes and traffic that, that they just seem to really vanish. Um, Super excited about the exit zero stuff and the, specifically around the signage for those det detours. One day I would love to see that being a just super easy, don't have to think about it connector, uh, recognizing that bridge is a big barrier there, but really glad that signage is going up because that's something we hear about a lot from folks who live in Clayton Park and um, fair. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to bring up, and this is something I've been kicking myself for because I feel like the ship sailed, but one day if all my dreams came true, the overhaul of the 102 and Dunbrack Street that just got done, there was a huge opportunity missed there to connect the main line to the Chain of Lakes Trail. And I wish that I could go back in time and campaign for that because if we'd been able to put in a tunnel and gotten people that would have been just a really beautiful moment. So one day I hope to see the main line connected to the chain of lakes trail um, because it would be a, a game changer for a lot of people. Those are all of my notes. 
Um, yeah, I, mean, I have to find out. I don't know very much about the 102 Dumbrack. Uh, I see Elizabeth's hand up because there was discussions a few years ago about looking for some integration opportunities there. Um, so I hope we didn't miss the boat. Um, we did have a plan the way that we did do a functional plan on how to connect the two. Um, and the option that was proposed was kind of a brand new bridge over the 102 for AT users. Um, I'll send you that, uh, but it's, it was awkward. Um, and, and we were, we thought that, that working with the existing infrastructure might be better. Um, Elizabeth, your hands up. Do you have a, were you want, did you want to talk about that or is it something else? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to let Annika know that, um, all the work that was done on that, the big overhaul you're talking about really wouldn't have lined up very well. It would have been really out of the way for people, but we are definitely looking at that connection and it is part of the plans. For that was sort of phase one of a of a project. The phase two will be the Dun, the actual Dunbrack 102 uh, interchange. I believe that bridge itself is uh, sort of nearing the end of its life, and there's different thoughts about what it will look like. But uh, don't worry. <laughs> At least as long as I'm in this position, that connector connection between those two trails uh, won't get lost. But it's it's definitely on our radar. Beautiful. There are a lot of people in Clayton Park who'd be very happy about that. Yeah, no, I think it'll probably be some sort of a multi-use path that will be on the structure itself. Um, and, but we're also looking at maybe roundabouts on both pieces, which means that structure that's there actually doesn't need that's all the lanes that are on it. If you had roundabouts, which means that it could be some extra real estate, even if the structure itself doesn't get replaced right away. So I don't, I'm not, I don't know the timeline though. I don't, it's not on our five-year plan at the moment, but it's definitely on the radar. Okay. okay, thank you, Elizabeth. I was like, God, when I hear things like that, I'm like, oh my God, we missed our opportunity. So that, that was kind of my understanding as well. So um, great. Um, Africville, that's a functional plan that is almost done, but which we need to go back and do a little bit more work. Um, part of the reason is, you know, to get that route, we need to buy a house um, and we need to acquire land from CN. And when you say things like that, all of a sudden you've added six years to the implementation at least. So we're gonna spend a few more months just kind of really being clear on whether there are other ways of kind of managing that. Um, and then the other thing that's sort of happening at the same time is, is the Africville vision kind of planning process. So we're definitely connected with those folks and um, I don't want our project to like, I'm trying to kind of go at the pace of the community, um, but also kind of keep our project and the need for our project kind of front and center. So um, if the committee wants, we can come back and do a little presentation on, on, on where we stand with that and interested in what people think of the preferred option, but I'll, you know, I'll, uh, happy to do that. Um, McDonald Bridge Halifax side, uh, we are still in the design phase. Um, we're taking a bit of an update. I don't know if it's gonna be council or transportation standing committee in October, but I'll have more information there. Um, it's, you know, it's complicated, it's doable, um, uh, but uh, more information to come on that this fall. So that's not very much, uh, but uh, you know, again, maybe maybe we can do some more more focused updates at this committee. If if you want focused updates, I guess on particular projects, maybe kind of send those to Hugh or to Katie, and uh, I can prepare a bit better and and you know bring a couple of slides that 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 might be of interest to folks. Yeah, that's a good idea, David. Um, so maybe people can think about that if you do want a focused uh, discussion on a particular project. Uh, contact me perhaps and and cc to david that would be good um so uh just remains for me to and i agree with the share the road folks emma was texting me that i should mention the share the road folks for the campaign so uh we're that's a dalhousie university group that that did some really interesting work around sharing the road and in that kind of thing so uh, i think we're gonna connect they had a little booth at the mayor's ride and i was glad to see them kind of okay um, yeah, I, um, I did actually have a comment uh, as well, um, going back to the um, e-scooters. Um, I've had uh, 
well, I've had letters uh, to me about this, and but I've also had my own personal experiences. Um, E-scooters definitely should not be on the sidewalk, and the, the changes to the Motor Vehicle Act say that. Um, they also are required to have helmets. Uh, well, in both cases, you, there no, seems to be no um, uh, monitoring of that. There's, there's no enforcement of that. And, and uh, I, I've seen personally very dangerous situations with, with these scooters without helmets, scooting fast on sidewalks without any warning of approach, uh, passing people on right and left sides randomly. Um, and in, they, where they're available commercially for rental, which is now the case in Halifax, I understand, uh, this is really dangerous. And, and my main concern is the pedestrian. Most people who are actively transporting themselves are pedestrians. Uh, E-scooters uh, are basically, as, as Douglas suggested, more recreational than anything. Um, and uh, if they're endangering pedestrians, they should definitely not be, not only not on the sidewalk, but I don't think they should be on multi-use paths either. That's just my two cents worth. Uh, but enforcement is the key, uh, definitely. Um, so you can put that in your uh, in the hopper, David, and uh, that's my that's my opinion. Um, so, are there any more uh, questions or concerns before we uh, conclude the business today? I just want to clarify a quick point I made. Yeah. Um, E-scooters right now, as they stand, I feel like are mostly recreationally, but I don't think we should plan around that because I think the future will be they're used more as, if anything, on par with cycling. Because I know currently I use my non-electric scooter and I take it back and I've taken it from work up in Leary Utec all the way back home down by the commons. So as people get to explore it more, I think we should plan to fit them into kind of that commuter category because I think realistically that's what the future will hold. Okay, thank you, Douglas. Um, let's move on then. Um, just to conclude today, uh, there are no committee member updates. Um, there are no added items. So the final thing is date of next meeting. And that is set for October 20th. Melina, um, Melina sorry? did have a three minute thing that she'd asked to add. I'm sorry? Oh, Hugh, oh. Um, if, if it's okay with the committee, if I could just make an awareness note. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Melina, I'd forgotten about that. Please go okay. ahead. I know because we've been we've been in, in all these discussions. Anyway, thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to make everyone know uh, September is Guide Dog Awareness Month, and I want to follow that up with a little story that happened today in Dartmouth Crossings. And uh, uh, Miss Kent, Miss Kent, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't think that's your jurisdiction, uh, but maybe it is. So I was out with a friend of mine who is visually impaired and uses a guide dog, and we were celebrating her one year of cancer-free. Uh, she has a stomach removed. And so we went into a restaurant and I will not say the restaurant yet. And we were denied access. Generally, I, I get this on a pretty, you know, two, three times a year and then everything else. We tried to talk to the server. The server went to the management on the phone. The management said no, even though we had, we have every right every right to, and if I could just get people just to not do the chat because the screen reader is going cuckoo in my head, I, I, just for a moment, thank you. <laughs> um, it, in, in any case, we were denied access. And the point of my story is not because of, of the restaurant and the management, because this is happening frequently, even more so uh, in the 20 years I've been a dog guide handler, but there was a patron in this restaurant, someone that is local, a woman who turned to my friend and myself and our sighted companion and said this, I quote, why don't you go and find somewhere else to eat? You're not wanted here. And forgive me, but the, for all my diplomatic ways, <laughs> I lost it. 
And I said, what did you say? And she repeated it again. And my statement to her was, it is a federal and a provincial law that all certified service and guide dogs are permitted into all public spaces. And she yelled at me, telling me, no, it is not. This is the reason I've asked to say this today, because I've never, ever been cut at the knees like that. It was to the point where my friends had to drag me out because I'm pretty sure had I made my way to her that I, I would have had the cops call on me. Regardless, we called the police to come and have it explained to the management. And so because it is Guide Dog Awareness Month, I, ju I just want everyone on this committee, I would appreciate it, everyone on this committee. If, if you know, you see this happening, please, please inform the people who are clearly ignorant. It's um, because I can't be on this committee and any other committees and out there bothering David <laughs> if I'm knocked down like this on a mon monthly and daily basis. Thank you for letting me share that. Okay, Malena, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Um, okay, so as, as I said, the date of the next meeting is October the 20th. I hope we will have a sufficient agenda and the meeting will go ahead. Uh, just to get back to the point that um, David made, if you, if you would like him to speak uh, on a sp specific project, um, by all means, let him and me know uh, and uh, he will try and accommodate you. Um, and while I'm on that, David, perhaps you can get back, back to me at some point and let me know about the Port on Lakes Trail. That would be good. I sent um, the email already, so I'll uh, hopefully have a, an answer for you and Councillor Kent tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, uh, for attending and for your, um, your discussion and uh, contributions. And uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you. Bye bye. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, everybody. everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you.